Have you ever dreamt about owning an expensive property, some amazingly lavish place to call your home? Well, you are not alone. Unless you were filthy rich, like most people, you too would have had at least once thought about how it would be like to live in an expensive house. Well, what about the most expensive house in the world? That's right, this French chateau, located in the heart of Louisiana, is constructed on a 23-hectare area, surrounded by woods. Sounds good, doesn't it? So, let's find out in the video. Well, it has broken the record for the most expensive house in the world. It was sold for a total of 301 million US dollars. And here's the interesting part, the buyer is supposedly anonymous. We do, however, know that the origin of the buyer is Middle Eastern. But why would a Middle Eastern buyer hide their identity? They would if they are, say, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, who has lately bought many luxury properties, including a $500 million yacht. In case you still don't know why the Saudi Crown Prince would not want that information to be public, it's because he preaches austerity and an anti-corruption approach back at home. Now you know. But what's actually inside and what makes the building so pricey? Let's get back inside the most expensive house in the world. The architecture of this building is made to resemble that of a 17th century castle. And it does look like a building from 17th century France, but it was built from the ground up in 2011. The Chateau Louis spans over an area very important for French history, adding to its high price and value. You will notice that there are references to 17th century architecture almost everywhere on the building. These required careful analyses and study of the style of decorative elements from those times. It actually looks quite marvelous, wouldn't you say? The house, by its proportions and size, gives off a strong vibe of the castle of Vaux de Vicomte. If you have seen that, then you would get what I'm saying. The first thing one notices outside the house is the gold-plated water fountains everywhere. Those, along with the grand marble statues, add to the lavishness of the area. You will also see the huge staircases and lots and lots of chandeliers inside the house. While designing the chateau, the goal was to combine the look of a Versailles-era castle, but the difference would be, of course, that this one would have all the modern conveniences. So, as lavish a palace could be for French kings to live in, also having all the technology in itself, a modern house in 2021 would. In fact, probably more. A built-in system within the mansion that lets users control everything from temperature to lighting, music to doorways, all from your smartphone. I'm getting excited even thinking about it, aren't you? Just use your phone to toggle the gold-plated water fountain, make it warm or cold, light a fire perhaps, why not? Dim the lighting, put some music on, wonderful. Like someone teleported today's technology back into the 17th century and then got to live like a king. So, what can you do living in a mansion like this? A lot! There's a home movie theater within the mansion, like having your own personal cinema at home. There's a squash court, if you feel like playing squash, and not one but two swimming pools, indoor and outdoor. The mansion also boasts two ballrooms and a wine cellar. Oh, and did I mention the underground nightclub? You couldn't ask for more, could you? There are some nice historical touches in there, such as a moat, but there's one nice difference. Moats back in the 17th century did not really have an underground meditation room, did they? The room is surrounded by water with fish swimming around and above your head. It's better than meditating in my own room, to be honest. It sounds almost too extravagant, doesn't it? The castles in 17th century France stood out for their lush and massive gardens. The area surrounding the Chateau Louis also managed to keep up with this tradition very well. You will notice colorful flower beds spanning throughout the gardens, along with topiary sculptures and the tidiest of box hedges. Did I mention the labyrinth? It really looks good in there. Why buy vegetables from the market when you can have your own little but fully functional farm and vegetable garden? Seriously, what does this place not have? The gardens have been designed to pay tribute to André Le Nôtre, who was the royal gardener under Louis XVI. They also feature a gold leaf fountain that looks awe-inspiring, especially during the day. This is most definitely one of Europe's largest and most luxurious palaces. The marble of the floor is made from 13 different types of sheets. I especially love the woodwork done in white and gold throughout the span of the palace. 
The dome of the living room is covered with incredibly historical and valuable paintings, such as the Filipino flashes and other incredible allegories. These paintings spread over the dome beautifully and pay homage to the rich historical French paintings from hundreds of years ago. It is also interesting to note that almost all the materials used in the construction of this palace, whether inside or outside, were French and not imported from abroad. Traditional stonemasons and watchmakers took turns to do their parts during this site's construction for three years. This is also the place where many celebrities have gotten married. That's right, the Kardashian wedding was held here as well. Imad Khashoggi is the man behind this palace who set it up from the ground up. He said it took them a total of three years to construct it, and it took a number of 17th century architecture techniques. Alongside that, the 21st century specialist craftsmen, including coppersmiths, mosaic artists, and sculptors, were hired to get the job done. It took a workforce of 200 people from living heritage companies to construct the palace. It is said that every single day, there were at least 120 people working on the site at a given time and no worker that took part in its construction could be deemed ordinary in any regards. The French kings of the time spent a lot of money to make their castles and palaces the most luxurious, but this one beats them all for a reason. The residence respects and honors the spirit and aesthetics of French history and culture, and celebrates the true essence of modern luxury living, I would say. While some people say it was a Qatari businessman who bought the palace, others debate it was the Saudi crown prince. But the details of the trade are known only to two parties, the buyer and the seller. The buyer remained anonymous and the seller abided by it. So all we can do is speculate and guess. That's all for this video, people. I hope you liked the content and for similar videos, don't forget to press the notifications button. Do subscribe to our channel, it does help. And show your support by liking the video. See you again with the next one.